it's a pretty sure bet that you're going to see DHCP mentioned on this 70-410 exam. And so while many of us taking this exam are going to be very familiar with DHCP, I still want to cover it here in the course to help you get past those questions, mostly as a refresher. Now, if you're brand new to this, then you need to see this, obviously. But for most of us, we've been around this for a while. So as a refresher, let's go. Now, DHCP obviously stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol. Now, this is a functionality that's based on the Boot P or the Bootstrap Protocol that I've mentioned earlier in the course. It was very popular early on. It's still popular in a lot of places. It's the most widely accepted and supported version of IP address configuration on the clients. And this is, with DHCP, kind of the next version or the improved version of Boot P. Now, DHCP is a client-server protocol. So you have to have some client functionality running out there on the client machines that get the IP addresses assigned to them. And you need the server-side protocol running to actually maintain the addresses and pass them out there. Now, clients automatically install the DHCP client service as part of TCP IP. So when we install the OS on the client side and we choose to install TCP IP, we automatically get the DHCP client service and it's automatically working. Now on the server side, there is a DHCP server service that we can install and configure. And in Windows Server 2012, we do that in the form of a server role. Now, how does DHCP work? Well, when we start up a client computer, it broadcasts a message on the network saying, hey, I need a DHCP server. I need someone to provide me with the correct IP configuration so that I can communicate on this network. The DHCP server will receive that and it will respond to the message. And there's a little bit of a handshake and back and forth. And eventually the client gets a TCP IP address and other information that we can choose to give it from the DHCP server. Now the DHCP server automatically maintains a database of addresses that have been assigned. And when an address becomes available, uh, it will take it back, put it back into the pool and maybe reassign it to another client. So DHCP not only takes care of addressing our clients, but it also makes sure that it maintains our list of addresses and it doesn't waste them. It will reuse them or recycle them if you want to think of it that way. Now let's talk about DHCP and IP version 6. Normally, when you hear the term DHCP, people are talking about DHCP version 4. Now when you hear the term DHCP v6 or version 6, well, duh, they're referring to the DHCP services for IPv6 clients. Now when we're dealing with DHCP version 6, you just need to understand that we're working with a protocol that is providing addresses to the clients in one of two modes. The clients can be in what's called a stateful mode, and that is where the clients acquire the IP version 6 address and network information, things like DNS server addresses and other things, and they acquire both of those pieces of information from the DHCP version 6 server. Their IP version 6 address and the network information. Now in stateless mode, the IP version 6 address is auto configured. And yes, you read right, IP version 6 can auto configure its addresses with no assistance from a DHCP server. So it'll auto configure itself, but it will still get the network information from the DHCP version 6 server. So the bottom line is, is we still need the version 6 server for all the extra information, but IP version 6 can't auto configure. So in stateless mode, it only is getting the network information, what we would call options in version 4, from the DHCP version 6 server. Now, here's an exam alert for you. Exam alert is this, an IP address of 169.254. If it starts with those two octets, this indicates that the client failed to successfully receive an IP address from the DHCP server. 
Now, it will try 10 times to get an address. If there's a failure for the address configuring for any reason, or if it never contacts a DHCP server, if a DHCP server never responds, eventually that client will self-configure in IP version 4, and when it does, it will give itself a 169.254 address. You can pretty much guess that that is not going to be communicating on the network. And when you, as soon as you see that address, you know something has happened. The DHCP server is not functioning correctly. Another thing to watch on the exam, Microsoft recommends that a single DHCP version 4 server provide services for no more than 10,000 clients. Keep that in mind, and we'll go a little deeper in the DHCP over the next three or four videos.